I know that you've spent much of your life around books and around reading, and uh, I wanted to just start out by maybe discussing some of your favorites. So I, I guess I was wondering, uh, what are your favorite fiction and nonfiction characters? Well, that's interesting. I think after 30-something years of reading about reading, which is what I do, a lot of the work I do here is reading reviews, not reading the books. Um, so having favorites is uh, hard to define because I see so much literature, I actually get to read some of it. And I guess as a young person, probably someone like Sidney Carton in uh, Tale of Two Cities. Mm -hmm. uh, what a story. And here he great, makes this great sacrifice. And if you read the book, you see the film, you come back to this character with a sense of um, admiration and uh, respect and longing, all those things that you know kind of resonate with you. Um, gosh, I don't know. As, as a fictional character, I think somebody else that clings, and again, because I do so much work uh, after hours with the nonprofits, with theaters, mm -hmm. uh, it's got an obvious answer, but Hamlet, uh, watching over the years, anyone who wants to tackle that uh, play, and anyone brave enough to tackle that character. You have a fictional character that's ultimately completely real because he's conflicted, he's confused, he makes mistakes. Um, the flaws are so obvious, but then we don't have good answers either. So again, I would say as, some, as, as a character, that seems almost like a real person, uh, Hamlet, you know, it comes back to that. For me. There are plenty of other fictive characters, and a lot of reading for pleasure uh, goes on. And you know, there's Harry Potter, and again, you watch him make an arc from a very young person to mm -hmm. a mature person, and you share with him. I think that's essential if you're going to have a fictional character that you remember, you care about, that they have to be somebody that you can relate to that's realistic enough to uh, want to have some identification with. with. So um, that's sort of an answer along that line. For real people, one of my favorite things to read, because it in incorporates history as well as a personal story, is, uh, is a biography. Um, and it's hard to beat someone like uh, David McCullough, writing about Truman. Mm -hmm. Truman, a person I'd always admired. He was president when I was born, so he has that <laughs> sense. Special significance. Yeah. Uh, but again, someone whose greatness is thrust upon him uh, in so many ways, and he achieves, of course, the rest of it, being put in the position he's in. But reading that book, um, drew me to a real life figure that then I, I, if possible, after reading that book, wanted to know even more about it. Um, another biography I've read recently is Kate, about Katherine Hepburn, and this biography was written after she had died. Interviews with her remaining siblings and relatives were revelatory, in a, not in a negative way, but in a way that let us know more about the person that she was and that she became after her stardom. And it's fascinating to see how she, too, is flawed, like Hamlet, like any real person is. And the Kate you see in interviews, the role she plays in a film, are all now a little more interesting to me for having read this biography. So uh, real life people, uh, there are lots of folks. There's a new book out about Marcel Proust's mother, which if anyone's got enough time in the summer or in retirement to be done with that, all that Proust. Um, his relationship to his uh, to this one parent uh, in, 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 uh, influenced quite a lot of his work. So, though I haven't read it, uh, Madame Proust is a book that I'm looking forward to. And that reminds me of another person whose uh, who's work would be interesting, I think, to many people. It's a book by Fanny Trollope, Frances Trollope, the mother of Anthony Trollope, that talks about Neshoba, a, a utopian community. She, of course, coming from England to this country, was interested in finding out about us Americans back in the 1820s. And she goes to Neshoba, this utopian community, which is very near. It's in Germantown. Mm -hmm. It's about 2,000 acres that uh, has been set aside. It's for educating and hopefully, hopefully uh, freeing slaves. Well, its success was, was here and there, but she was all about this. And, of course, her responses to Americans and our, our Perception by fellow English people was, was that of hooligans and wild right. people and making a lot of bad choices. But her book is absolutely fascinating. So again, um, it's a book by her, but then in so many ways it's about her because she's commenting on what she's seeing. And then she writes a novel a few years later which incorporates many of these ideas. Um, there's a new book coming out that's come out and we have it about Jack Nicholson called Five Easy Decades, and I think that would be interesting too. So I haven't read that yet, but I'm looking forward to it. Um, Again, no favorites, real life people, um, 
there's so many to choose from. So. <laughs> yes, sir. No, <laughs> but these are these are some that I, I draw attention to as they are in books that are easily available. Great. In yes, this sir. library, in the library. Yes.